If you're wondering why Minecraft had a chat for 10 years and everything was fine, and then they said they have terms of service and they may ban people for misbehaving, this is probably the reason. It's because uh, the Biden administration is pressuring game companies to censor, to spy on people, to have terms of service. And we can see here, uh, the Homeland Security will spend $700,000 to investigate radicalization through video games. So I will ask you, if you're a researcher into video games, and the government gives you $700,000, are you going to find any problems with the video games or not? Because I personally would find a lot of problems. I'd be, oh yes, yes, yeah, absolutely. Oh, very concerning. Oh, extremely concerning. You know what? It's so concerning, I may need more than $700,000. Like, hopefully next year, you can pay me more so I can find even more concerning things. Because that's how human beings work. Where there is cash, there is an incentive to receive more cash. And by the way, video games were always the scapegoat of extremist politicians. In the beginning, it was like, oh my god, GTA is so dangerous. Oh. Kids cannot differentiate between fact and fiction. They can play GTA and then they can consider that doing the things they do in the game, they can reciprocate and do it in, in real life. You know, Doom is a murder simulator. Uh, Jack Thompson. Ah. Now it's, uh, oh my god, the video games. Like, people can play video games and then they can experience sexismus in the video game or racismus. And then they will do it in real life. If only we can surveil these people. If only we can check and verify what they speak and how they talk and, and we can listen in. If we can put a microphone in every person's house, it would help us, the government, combat radicalization a lot better. Mm hmm. Mm hmm. Just like they did in the Soviet Union. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Just like they're doing in China. Can can we let? Can we borrow some of those tools? Can we learn some of those authoritarian tactics? Can we surveil our own citizens like Big Brother? Cause then we can keep everyone safe. I mean, I, I generally don't know how uh, the United States used to catch terrorists back in the day without listening in to people's phone calls, without checking in people's private mails. How did they do it, chat? How were they capable of stopping bad guys without violating people's privacy? I do not know. They must have been some super people, weren't they? You know, at this rate, why can't everyone just have a police officer in their house? In their house, like with you, with your family. A, a member of the government should be in everyone's family. I guarantee to you, that will stop radicalization. Why can't we do that, Joe Biden? Why? Why are you so powerless at making it happen? Just give me an FBI agent into my home so he can listen in, so he can see if there's any radicalization taking place. Please, I beg you, U.S. government, give me the FBI agent. But all jokes aside, right, I mean, this is what it is. Um, first of all, their only concern seems to be white nationalists, right? So far-left extremists, anarcho-communists, you know, any of that, like, that's not a problem. Uh, Islam, like extremism, no, 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 that doesn't happen, no. We're just going to spend money to, to look into just one type of extremism. Fair enough. Okay. And how are you going to do that? Well, simple. We're going to monitor people. Because at the end of the day, you know how uh, the left says that sexist jokes and racist jokes normalize sexismus and racismus? Well, teaching people that it's okay for corporations to surveil on your activity normalizes surveillance. Like, people are now more okay in current year to have companies monitor their speech. Which is actually what happens with Sony. When you play games on the PlayStation, they said that they have an AI. So if you play with a friend of yours, the AI listens in and certain words can trigger the algorithm. I don't think this is about uh, combating bad guys, because at the end of the day, like if, if you're going to combat bad guys, why would you make a public statement out of it? Because the bad guys can go like, OK, well, it's not safe to speak in Minecraft. Let's just use the phone. Let's just meet in real life. Let's just communicate through mail. Right? Like if, if you legitimately are 
a person that wants to commit criminal activity, why the fuck would you do it in places that you know they're being surveilled? So this is not about that. No, this is about policing speech and normalizing the concept that when you're online, it's okay for companies to track your activities. It's okay for companies to monitor what you say. I find this apprehensible. I find it disgusting. They go on and they say that uh, there's extremists in Steam communities. And my question is, okay, why don't you arrest them? Like if there are extremists on Steam and you know about them, why don't you arrest them? Why don't you do your fucking job as the government? Because at the end of the day, it's not Steam's job to get rid of people. No, it's the police. If they did something illegal, arrest them. If they didn't do something illegal, leave them alone. If you think that what they are doing isn't illegal, but it's serious enough, then fucking criminalize it. Oh, but the first speech amendment. Okay, well, then get enough people on your side and remove the amendment. You can change the constitution. Oh, you don't have enough people agreeing with you. Then fuck off. But anyway, right. So um, <clears throat> this is very concerning. Uh, the United States, uh, definitely not the country of uh, the brave and the free anymore. It's the country of the brave and the surveilled. Let me know what you guys think, and I'll see you in the comment section. Take care.